Well, hi everyone, Ron Valent here. Welcome to Mark of the Beast part two. Uh, we're going to flesh out some more issues here. Uh, it's gonna be just a cursory overview because of time, but uh, we'll be able to take a look at some serious issues. So let's get right into it. Before we jump in, as always, you wanna be able to ask the creator of all things for uh, supernatural help in order to understand his word. And so let's go ahead and do that right now. Dear Jesus, we just ask for your blessing right now that you can send your Holy Spirit to illuminate our minds, to help us to be able to understand the signs of the times and the issues for today. Help us to understand your word in relationship to particularly the bark of the beast and how it pertains to us. You've warned us that, especially in the last days, there's going to be a tremendous deception and that if possible, even the very elect could be deceived. So help us not to have that happen to ourselves and that we can walk in your ways uh, as well. I want to thank you for all these things in your name. Thank you. Okay, we had looked at uh, verse 16 quite a bit there and identified the various factors within that. But today we want to kind of nail down more this whole issue of uh, what this beast is here. And uh, right there in verse 17, and also that uh, we see that it's a number of a man and his number is uh, 666. Now, there's actually uh, two beasts in Revelation chapter 13, and this beast here would be the first beast that we're going to identify. So let's go ahead and uh, go back and take a look at uh, the beginning of chapter 3. We saw that it was a composite beast, right? It was uh, part leopard, part bear, and part lion. And uh, the dragon gave him his power, and uh, it went on and it had does blasphemies and it goes on for 40 and two months uh, 1260 years is what we identified so let's go ahead and go into daniel chapter 7 and just take a quick look at that okay so in daniel chapter 7 here you see in verse 2 that daniel had a vision by night and he saw four winds uh, of heaven strove upon the great sea winds uh, in prophecy is uh, tumultuous times uh, and strife and uh, the sea you see my reference back to revelation seventeen fifteen, and that is people's nations multitudes and tongues so this has to do with uh, where there's a lot of people and there is in verse three four great beasts that came up you know diverse one from another and it goes in and it talks about it um, the first was like a lion with eagle's wings and actually this whole time prophecy here that we're going to look at is the same one that basically was given to Nebuchadnezzar in verse uh, chapter 2, where the uh, image of a man was given with a head of gold and the uh, chest and arms of silver and the belly of brass and uh, the legs of iron and then the feet of miry clay and iron and ten toes. And the, in, that, in that vision, the very first uh, head of gold is actually Babylon. And uh, this lion here is Babylon as well. And archaeologists who have dug up uh, the remains of uh, Babylon, uh, they find that uh, there's uh, insignias of lions with eagles' wings uh, denoting uh, Babylon itself. <clears throat> and then Babylon gets taken over by uh, Medo-Persia, and that is the bear that we're seeing right there. It has three ribs in its mouth, that's in verse 5. Uh, when they took over, they took out... Uh, Egypt, Lydia, I think it is, and also Babylon. And then after that uh, came a leopard, uh, and it also had four wings. The leopard's very fast, and four wings is even extremely fast. <clears throat> and Alexander the Great, uh, when he went and he conquered, he did it in tremendous speed. And then after that, there was a fourth beast, in verse 7 here, uh, dreadful and terrible, strong, exceeding, and it had iron teeth. And this correlates to the fourth beast in uh, Daniel chapter 2, the legs of iron. Uh, and um, so iron is, you know, the hallmark of uh, of Rome. And uh, that's why they had uh, tremendous um, implements of war. They were using iron for their implements there. <clears throat> okay, and in the very end of verse 7, it says it had 10 horns. And, uh, and what happened there was... Uh, uh, Rome kind of broke up into 10 regions, and uh, th this is the 10 regions here. Uh, you got the Anglo-Saxons, Saxons were the English, the Franks were the French, Alemanni, the Germans, Visigoths, the Spanish, Svevi, 
the Portuguese, Lombards, the Italians, and the Burgundians, the Swiss. So, and then there's three that got plucked up, as we're going to read in verse 24. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them. And that's a little horn, diverse from the first, and shall subdue three, three kings. And so the Heruli, the Vandals, and the Ostrogoths were wiped out uh, by this uh, little horn power. And in verse 8 it says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. You can see how this ties back into Revelation 13, when it talks about blasphemies, and here it's talking about speaking great things. And uh, in 17 there and 18, it talks about a man. So here it has the eyes of a man. Okay, now we notice here that uh, a little horn power comes up out of the ten horns uh, and out of the fourth beast here. So the fourth beast is Rome, and Rome kind of broke up into ten regions. And, uh, and then we find that the papacy rose up, and as it was kind of falling apart there, uh, uh, the papacy took, uh, took power. Continue on in chapter 7. Here's verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time, times, and the dividing of time. So let's kind of go through this. He's going to speak words against the Most High. We saw that in Revelation 13. is going to have blasphemies. And he's going to wear out the saints of the Most High. Uh, you go to Revelation chapter 17. That beast there, the scarlet-colored beast, will do the same thing. So that's the same beast, actually. And we'll think to change times and laws. Okay, now, um, it was the uh, the papacy that actually went ahead and changed the Ten Commandments. Uh, they went ahead and dropped the Second Commandment, I believe it is, about uh, worshiping idols. And uh, they divvied up the, the, uh, the Tenth One into two. And they also changed times as well, because it was the papacy that went ahead and changed the sanctity of uh, Sabbath to Sunday worship. And they call it a mark of their authority. And, uh, and they say, behold, all the world follows after us. Okay, and then they continue on for times, times, and the dividing of time. Now, this is a situation here where you might want to have another translation, like a, maybe the New King James, to understand it. You'll find that a time is 360 days. Uh, <clears throat> times is two times. And then the dividing of time is half. So again, it's another 1260 time prophecy of which the papacy reigned from 538 to 1798 where it received the deadly wound. So all of the reformers basically identified this beast power as being the papacy and is why they were so persecuted. It became a criminal offense to actually own portions of the Bible, even to the point where you could be uh, burned at the stake. And many lost their lives on account of it because... Uh, this identified the, the papacy as being this beast power. So let's take a little bit of a look here at the identifying number here, 600, three score, and six. Uh, one thing that uh, happened with the papacy is that they actually, the Pope, his mitre, it was, uh, had this inscription on it, Vicarius Philae Die, and um, it basically means the vicar of Christ or in place of Christ. And uh, if you add it up in uh, Hebrew and Greek, it comes up to 666. Now, that's a pretty important uh, note there, but 666, it goes uh, even far beyond that, and we'll take a look at that. Oh, before we do that, I should note that here, it's a number of a man, right? So there you have the Pope as being the man of this beast system. Okay, here we have uh, Genesis, the first book of the Bible in the creation week, and uh, the various different days of creation. It's interesting to note here on the sixth day, verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And that's on the sixth day. And I think that ties into this whole idea of 666. It's a number of a man. It's humanity. And it's kind of interesting to note that actually, and this is one of the uh, commenters of the videos had posted this, and that... Uh, Mankind uh, is made up of approximately 18% carbon. And carbon is the sixth element of the periodic table. It has six neutrons, six 
electrons and six protons. <laughs> six, six, six. Okay, let's go ahead and look at uh, Genesis chapter 3 here in the fall of mankind. Uh, verse 1, it has a serpent being more subtle than any of the beasts of the field. And Satan works through the serpent to deceive Eve to go ahead and eat of the fruit that uh, they weren't supposed to eat. <clears throat> God said that you will die if you eat of that tree. It was a test. And then in verse 4, it says, The serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. So there is a lie being spoken of that uh, God said you would die and that uh, the serpent religion and his system of worship says that you will not die, you will live forever. And in verse 5, uh, it says that for God does know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So there is a lie that uh, basically you can become as God. And this lie right here is the basis of the entire religious system of worship that uh, Satan has created, the Babylonian system of worship that's spoken about in Revelation chapter 17. When you actually think about it, uh, 666 is kind of like a human trinity that it refers to that man can become as God. Also note here in verse 5, it says that your eyes shall be opened. Remember the eyes of a man of the little horn power? Uh, that uh, I think ties in directly to that as well. Side note I want to share with you, because I don't know if anyone else is even talking about this. This is what I kind of come up with. But you know that uh, skull and bones, they got the skull and the bones there, and then below it it's 322. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. So this is talking about the fall of mankind. And it's also talking about, you know, the lie that you can become as God's. So I believe that uh, 322 actually refers to Genesis 322. Okay, in the first video of the Mark of the Beast, you talked about the Sabbath and the uh, Ten Commandments being written in your mind. And this is why it's important. So let's go ahead and take a look at Genesis uh, chapter 2. It's the seventh day now. <clears throat> and verse 2, it says, On the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all of his works which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it that he had rested from all of his work which God created and made. Do you think that God really had to rest on the seventh day? What he did is he laid out a program for mankind to remember that the creation story and to have a rest day and to commune and, and to uh, draw close to him. And that's why it's the uh, longest commandment within the Ten Commandments, almost 98 words. It's very important. Because if you lose track of that, then you lose track of your whole relationship and, you know, the plan of salvation. So it's very important to note that he sanctified it and blessed it. And, and when you do that, you set it aside for a holy use. You won't find in the Bible the change of the seventh day Sabbath to Sunday. It's simply not there. And God does not bless Sunday as being a day of worship. It's, it's a day that is going to be used to worship the sun God. So in Revelation 13, 15, the big issue there was about worship, who you're going to worship. So let's go ahead and take a quick little look at this issue of worship here in Genesis chapter 4. So Adam knew Eve and brought forth Cain, and then they had Abel. And in due time it came to pass in verse 3 that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, and Abel brought of the firstlings of his flock, made an offering unto the Lord with that. And in verse 5, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. That's talking about God. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. <clears throat> and in verse 6 it says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shouldn't thou not be accepted? So God is basically saying that he's not doing what he was supposed to do. Here he was worshiping God in his own way, and God had told him to do something else. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire. Okay, and then it ended up being that um, in verse 8 that Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. So this is basically kind of a uh, cursory view of Revelation chapter 13 and what's going to happen here. There's going to be those who worship God in the proper way and those who worship God in an improper way. 
and they don't understand what's really going on. And then, in fact, they're going to be so angry with the other that they're going to go ahead and, and kill the other, thinking that they're doing God a service. It's not that you're just worshiping. It's, it's how you worship, too. It's very important. Another issue about worship can be found in 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22. Uh, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of lambs. For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. So if you know the story there, basically that um, God told them to do a certain thing and they did not do it. And they, you know, went ahead and tried to worship God in their own way. And uh, Samuel's saying, look, you know, far better off to obey God than to do your own method of sacrifice. Let's go ahead and take another look at the 666 from a different angle. Now, this is a piece of paper that I've had in my Bible for, I don't know, over 35 years, I think it is. <laughs> and uh, what this uh, is, is a magic square. And uh, the Babylonian priests would wear this, and it represented the uh, cosmos as they mapped it out. And uh, the numbers are from number 1 through 36. It looks like they're kind of just randomly placed there. But if you go ahead and add up each row, whether horizontally or vertically, each row would add up to 111. And if you have six rows of 111, the summary number is 666. So 666 is actually the summary number of the whole astrological system of worship. And uh, that goes along, you know, if you, all the way through the uh, Bible, you'll see that uh, those who didn't follow God, they're always worshiping the sun, moon and stars, which ultimately uh, would be, you know, worshiping yourself. So when you go ahead and look at the papacy, Basically, it's the amalg amalgamation of all of these uh, previous systems of worship of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Egypt, and whatnot, a Babylonian system of worship, and uh, it Christianized it. Another angle on this whole issue of 666 is uh, the death of Christ on the cross. Now, the cross actually is a symbol of the sun, which is a proxy for Satan. So it's basically a satanic sacrifice. The ancients, when they would look at the sun, they'd squint their eyes and they'd see a cross. And so the cross would represent the sun. And so the other aspect to this is that um, back then they would see that a lightning bolt would also represent uh, Satan and could also represent be represented by the number six. And you also have a nail could also represent a lightning bolt. So when Jesus was crucified on the cross, he was uh, crucified with three nails or three lightning bolts. So 666. So there you have on the cross fully demonstrated for all of the unfallen worlds and the angels to, to look at the true intentions of Satan. You know, that Satan will actually go ahead and uh, crucify and destroy God in order that he can have his way. And it's also a representation of mankind as well, that mankind left to himself in his fallen condition will do the same thing as well. Uh, so there you also have contrasted to Satan's character. You have the character of God, that God is willing to be totally snuffed out of existence that we may live. And that's why the cross will be the emblem all the way throughout eternity of, you know, the, the, the whole struggle between uh, selfishness and love. So it's a very powerful symbol of the love of God and the intents of Satan. Okay, so let's just wrap this up here. We have in Revelation chapter 13 two beasts, the first beast being the papal power, the second beast we identified as the United States. And out of the United States, we're going to have the image of the beast, which is the apostate uh, Protestant world. And I think it's going to be joined in with all of the other religions of the world uh, under this new world religion that they're setting up. And that this image of the beast in verse 15 says that would uh, cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. It's all about worship. And that in verse 16, that um, this mark is an invisible mark that uh, is identified back in Ezekiel uh, chapter 9 we were looking at. And uh, it's something that uh, is put upon us. And we see here that the mark actually is not a visible mark that uh, will be seen by mankind. It's not going to be a Luciferase uh, identity mark or anything like that. Although that whole system is being set up to be the uh, the precursor to it. It's going to be a system of uh, no buy, no sell. It's coming up fairly quickly within the next year where you won't be able to function in society probably. 
without a health pass or a common pass. It's going to be a very serious time for all of us. And ultimately, in the end, what's going to happen, uh, the final conclusion of this is there's going to be two uh, people groups, those who have the law of God uh, written in their hearts, as we see in Hebrews 8 and 10, and those who worship the beast or worship themselves or or indifferent. And uh, these two are going to, going to clash. It's going to culminate, basically, in the whole issue of uh, Sunday Sabbath. That's going to be the kind of the outer mark of everything. And those who will not worship this beast system on uh, the spurious Sabbath Sunday to save Mother Gaia Earth will be will have a death decree placed upon them. And so all of these things are wrapping up fairly quickly. And uh, and the things that we've uh, studied for many years are coming to pass. So stay safe out there. Ask God for wisdom as how to navigate this whole thing. And uh, we'll uh, see you on the other side.